Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be showing you guys how to create your own arm warmers, hand warmers, fingerless gloves, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to be showing you all how to do it knitting and crocheting. So I learned how to crochet and knit off the internet and via many, many, many tutorials. One of the things that I found really frustrating when I was first starting to learn how to knit and crochet was it felt like everybody was speaking a foreign language. It constantly felt like I had to open a hundred tabs just to figure out one pattern because they would simply say the abbreviation like, oh, SC this row and HDC this and HDC that. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? So I am going to be including different sections and you can check out the chapters. Uh, they'll be titled in the description box below. I'll be splitting this video up to include specific breakdowns of every technique that I'll be using in each pattern. And then I'll go through the tutorial walkthrough with you and there will also be written instructions at the end. I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys create your own very cute arm warmers and let's begin. For this project, you are going to need about 68 grams or 180 yards of DK slash light worsted yarn, 4 millimeter circular needles, a tapestry needle, and some scissors. To make a slip knot, you're going to grab the yarn in between these fingers, and with your right hand, with your thumb and first finger, kind of put it in like that, twist it and then grab the working yarn. So the yarn that's attached to the yarn ball, grab that yarn and pull through. Pull, pull, pull. And then you can go ahead and slip it on your needle and tighten it up. That's how you make a slip knot. All right, so to do the actual cast on, what we're gonna do is again, this is your tail. This is your working yarn. Hold the slip knot in place so that's not just slipping everywhere. And then you're gonna take the tail end and the working yarn and you're gonna hold it like a diamond. And now to actually cast on, you're gonna take your needle under this yarn in front of your thumb and then over the yarn that's by your finger and then pull it through. So that's one casted on stitch. Put those two fingers in between. Over. Under, through. And then you're just gonna repeat that however many stitches you need to cast on. My apology is that this might be a little difficult to see because I am working with black yarn, but I also do wanna show you all that black yarn is really not that scary. You can do it and I believe in you. So to knit, you're gonna take your right needle, go through that first loop, and then go to the back. And I'm a thrower. <laughs> There's different ways that you can knit. I knit by throwing, so I throw it around and then scoop, scoop that out and then shove that stitch off of your needle. And you have knitted one stitch. So go ahead and just repeat that for the whole row. Here's how to purl. So to purl, we're gonna take our right needle and you're gonna see these little bumps in your knitting. Those little bumps indicate that you're working with a purl stitch. So to purl, you're gonna go from right to left in the front of that first stitch and you're gonna throw your yarn around your needle again and then scoop it out, but from the back this time and then go ahead and slide it off your left needle. So again, right to left, throw, and then go ahead and slip that stitch off. To cast off, you are first going to knit two stitches. Go ahead and knit as normal. And make sure when you are casting off that you are not holding your needles like too tightly. Otherwise that edge that you cast it on is going to be super, super tight. Um, I've made this mistake many times before. <laughs> I 
Now that you've knitted two stitches, in order to cast off, you're going to take your left needle, hook it under that very first stitch that you knitted, and then pull it over, sort of just slide that over that second stitch. And now you've successfully casted off your first stitch. So to do it again, you're going to knit two, make sure that second is knitted, and then go ahead, hook that left needle under that first, and slip it over that other stitch. And then you're just going to repeat this until you've cast it off all of your stitches. First thing we're going to do is make a slip knot. Go ahead and put it on your needle. And then we're going to use the long tail cast on to cast on about 50 stitches, or at least that's what I used for the circumference of my arms. So these hand warmers are just worked in a stockinette stitch, which means that it's knit one row, purled the other. Basically, in order to make the arm warmers, you're going to be knitting in stockinette stitch a panel. Once you've knitted your last stitch, go ahead and just turn your needles. So even though we're working on circular needles, we're not joining in on the round. So all we're gonna do is turn back and forth our work. Next, you're going to purl this row. So I've knitted and purled a couple of rows, but I just wanted to show you guys how to measure it on yourself. So don't do as many rows as I did, but I did this so it's a bit easier to see. But basically the way that I like to measure it is I like to make sure I'm working on circular needles uh, so that I can like loop it around. Because this is basically just going to be a flat panel that gets seamed up at the end, I basically pretend it's getting seamed up, <laughs> like at the uh, ends here, and then hold them together, and then make sure your arm can go through comfortably. That's about the circumference that you would want it at. Make sure that uh, it's not like super loose. What you might find is that you're like, oh, I need to put my hand through it. So then I need to make it really big, but like when you're putting your hand in a glove, you're usually kind of doing this sort of motion where you're making a bit smaller. Plus, because it's a knit fabric, it's going to be a bit stretchy. And so I would make sure that you can just, you know, slip your hand in and then make sure that you like the size of it on your arm. I think that's probably more important on this one. So I have knitted nearly a hundred rows. Uh, basically, as I knit, I'm going to be trying it on for size on my own arm, and I would like to have it sort of overlap these fingers. An easier way to like measure it on yourself is to make sure that the actual panel is on like the wire portion, which is more flexible, instead of like being stuck on your needle. So what I did periodically is I would make sure that I'm going to a length that I like I want it sort of near my elbow but I would also like it to overlap my fingers and then just like allow for a little thumb hole right here so this is about a hundred rows uh, and about 13 inches in total length but now I'm almost ready to cast off the last thing I need to do before I cast off is make sure that I the last row I'm working is a purl row So now that I have worked my last purl row, I am now ready to cast off. Okay, now we've reached our last stitch. So go ahead and cast that, ah, cast that off. And then pull your yarn through. We're gonna leave a really long tail in order to seam up this side and leave a little hole for our Thumb. This step isn't necessarily required, but I do really recommend it, especially if you're working with a darker yarn, because if you block out your panel, it'll be a lot easier to see your stitches on the side, which will be really helpful when you're seaming it all together. So what I like to do is I know that my cast on edge is stretchier, 
than my cast off edge. So basically, I am going to make sure that the cast on edge, the stretchy edge, is going to be the one that's like on my arm. And then the tighter edge or the cast off edge is going to be what's wrapped around my fingers. Because we're seaming with the yarn that was left on the cast off edge first, you're only going to seam a few stitches before you need to leave a hole for your thumb. And then afterwards, you're just going to seam the rest of the length of the arm warmer. We're going to be using the vertical seam technique in order to close up the edges. To do so, go ahead and thread your needle. So if you stretch open your knitting, you'll see that like behind the braid, there are these horizontal bars that are running between the braids. So Basically, what you're going to want to do is sort of stretch out your knitting so that you can see those horizontal bars easier. And then you're going to go ahead and put your needle through. Uh, for the first seam, I like to go under the braid or like the knit portion that's like on top of the row. So as you can see, like this is the very first stitch, very first knit. Go ahead and pull that through. And then we're gonna alternate sides so that we just went and looped under the right side. Now we're gonna loop under the left side. I feel like starting the seam is much more difficult than like continuing it because once you have started your seam, you're gonna start to see where the stitches open up and then you can sort of follow that guide uh, and that line all the way through. You can even keep it a little loose and then tighten up as you go. But you see how like, okay, this is where we've started seaming. And then you're seeing that the loop is coming out right here, right? So another trick that I like to do, especially with darker fabrics or darker yarns, is I like to put my needle like where the yarn is coming out from and then scoop from under. That way you find your horizontal bar super easily and you don't have to like stretch out your knitting and keep looking for it. And then just make sure you are tightening as you go. And that's a really nice invisible vertical seam. And then once you've done about 20 stitches, and of course measure it on your own hand, but for reference, I did, I stitched 20 stitches. And then I slip it on my hand and I literally just like wrap the arm warmer around. And I know that I'm going to need to leave about 10 stitches alone in order to make enough room for my thumb. Um, however, I have really fat thumbs <laughs> and you might not. So definitely try this on for size as you're knitting it and um, or seaming it so you know how much room to leave for your thumb. So the best way that I found to do this is literally just to go over and under those horizontal bars but just for 10 stitches on my right side of my panel, I'm going to find that bar, go over it, find the next bar, and then you can do, you know, your regular going under it. So that would be two. Again, go from where your yarn is coming out from, find those horizontal bars, found those. I like to sort of put my needle underneath them and shimmy them out just so they're a little bit more, you know, up front, close and personal. <laughs> and then go ahead and go over that first horizontal bar and do the regular under over seam for the second one. Now I will say one thing that you want to keep in mind when you are just threading your yarn through the edge is that you don't want to make it super super duper tight because if you do then this whole thing will scrunch up so make sure you're like you know trying it on for size making sure that your yarn is relatively flat and stretchy so i've done the first initial seam i've left some room for my thumb I'm going to go on this side and count 10 and then on the 11th stitch I'm going to find that horizontal bar and then just keep seaming until I'm done. Now I have 
seamed up the side and you can see that vertical invisible seam does exactly as the name says and you can barely see the seam on the side. Uh, there's really no rhyme or reason to the way that I weave in things. Uh, usually at the end of a project I get super lazy and I don't want to weave it in and I will do the crappiest job of weaving it in. But you know, as, as long as you secure it so that it doesn't start unraveling, especially just from there, you know, um, I think you've done a successful job. There we have it. A finished arm warmer. So I've actually already made the crochet version of the arm warmer and I'm kind of looking at my ball of yarn like, do I have enough? If this is a really good hack, I'm going to keep it in the video. If it's not, I'm editing it out. But I'm going to take my kitchen scale because I don't really use it for cooking anyways. And then I'm going to measure how much my arm warmer is. 1.7. And my yarn. Okay, theoretically, I should have enough. So we're gonna keep it. <laughs> For this project, you will need approximately 100 grams or 292 yards of DK light worsted yarn, a three millimeter crochet hook, tapestry needle, and some scissors. So you can start your project off with a traditional slip knot where, you know, you just Go ahead and make a little slip knot. It's very secure, but it also does show a knot at the very beginning of your crochet, which I'm not the biggest fan of. So what I like to do is a knotless crochet start. <laughs> and to do that, go ahead and hold the yarn in my left hand, sort of make a little loop here, not like a loop, but you know, loop it around my finger. And then I take my crochet hook and then I'll put it here and I'll twist it. And then once you twist it, go ahead and like hold where your twist is right here. And then just start chaining as normal. And then you'll see that you have a fairly secure start here without having to have made a knot. To make a chain, you're going to wrap the yarn around your hook and then pull it through. In order to make a single crochet, you're going to go through either just the front loop or both the front and back, whichever you've decided. And then once that's through, go ahead and yarn over and then pull that yarn through. And then go ahead and yarn over again and pull it through both. So to do a slip stitch, you're going to just Put your needle through. When you see one of these stitches, that V, that's what you're going to insert your hook under. And then make sure when you're doing slip stitches that your tension is like very loosey-goosey. Otherwise, your slip stitch rows are going to make your entire project super, super tight. So just be really wary of that. So once you've put your hook underneath that first V, Go ahead and yarn over, pull through. You're going to just pull that right through and you've made one slip stitch. So go like ahead and again, put it through that second V, yarn over and slip, 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 slip it right through. For the crochet, we're doing it a bit different in that we're going to be crocheting the length of it and then making the width as we make more rows. Your first row of chains should be as long as you want your hand warmer to be. I chained about 60 stitches. Go ahead and make one extra chain and that is going to be your turning chain. So now I'm at 61 total chains. The first row that you're gonna do is going to be single crochet into every stitch across this entire chain. 
I like to go in through both the front loop and this back loop over here. I just find that if I do that, there's less of a strange gap at the beginning of my crochet panel. You can definitely just go through that front loop, especially if you're a beginner. It won't change the look very much. Now we have done a single crochet into every stitch or chain, and we are going to make one chain here just as your turning chain. And you are going to slip stitch into every single stitch here. Once you have finished your row of slip stitches, go ahead and chain one. So we're really just going to be repeating a single crochet row and then a slip stitch row until you have a panel that is wide enough to go around the circumference of your arm. And instead of like going through the front here, we're going to be going through the back. So there are these V's that are stacked on top of the row versus on the side. So we're gonna go into that second V right here because again, remember that first loop is your turning chain. Find that second V and then you're gonna put your hook into that V, pull up and then pull through. So again, we're gonna go through the V that's sort of stacked on top of the rows Go ahead and pull through and make your single crochet and you're gonna start to see that this like braid knit texture is going to lay flat and up on the top of your panel okay so i have finished one row of single crochets and then from here we're going to chain one turn your work and then go ahead and slip stitch through the back of every stitch. So again, when you are starting your new row, don't go into that first stitch because that's the one that you just created as your turning chain. So you're gonna go into that second V and then go ahead and slip. I have done 70 total rows, uh, alternating between the single crochet and the slip stitches. My tension tends to get a little wonky when I crochet, so again, I'm gonna recommend, if you're in the same boat, to block it out. And it's not super necessary on this project, but I think it makes it look just a bit neater overall, particularly like at the edges. Additionally, I'm going to leave myself, yet again, a really long tail. I'm gonna be using this tail to seam uh, my edges together. Oh, and also, I won yarn chicken. So try out the, you know, weighing it on a scale. I'm going to use slip stitch in order to seam my edges together. And then for reference, the hand portion seam is about 10 stitches. The thumb hole size that I needed was about eight stitches. So now we are ready to seam the two sides together. We're going to be using a slip stitch seam through the front loops and then the bottom rung of the other side of the Panel. So originally in all of the stitches, we were working through the back loops in order to create our single crochets, but instead we're going to be working through these front chains uh, in order to make our slip stitch seam. First, we're going to find that first V on the front and then go ahead and hook under that. And then go ahead and find these like rungs on the bottom. Go ahead and hook underneath that first rung, yarn over, and then slip that through. So again, you want to go through that top V portion, go through your second rung, and then slip your stitch. Okay, so I'm ready to make my thumb hole, and to do so, I'm basically just going to create uh, slip stitches along one side of my seam for whatever amount I need to leave for my thumb holes. Okay, so I have seamed up the rest, left my thumb hole, and then I'm going to just go ahead and pull through, and then from here, Again, I'm probably just going to twist these knots together and weave in your ends. Here's what the finished arm warmer looks like. So 
we are now done with the arm warmers, both versions. Also, I just want to point out that these arm warmers can double as leg warmers and they're still super cute. Don't mind this, but if I were to wear them as leg warmers, you know, I can just like slip them on and like there's the thumb hole here, just, you know, slide it around, no one's gonna see. But look, like it can be, it can double as leg warmers. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys learned something today and I hope you all are making really cute arm warmers. I really want to see them if you do. So please tag me in photos, tag me in TikToks, so wherever you can find me. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments. I'll be trying my best to answer them all. Make sure to give me a like and subscribe for more. Bye.